Okay, we are live. <laughs> uh, hi, hi, Mira. Hello. <laughs> How are you? Good. Mr. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for being with us tonight. Thank you, like all uh, you know, the joiners uh, on the Sira community who have decided to um, give their time today and watch our very, very interesting session. It's one of the new uh, kind of sessions that we are uh, launching on the platform uh, that really is focusing on uh, creative play, art therapy. So we are very honored and pleased to have you with us, uh, Mira, tonight. Uh, I'll, I'll let you introduce yourself uh, Hick, uh, with more details to our audience. Uh, from my end, I would just like to uh, thank you again, a big, big thank you for being part of our uh, expert community, for bringing this expertise um, at our finger fingertips, and for making uh, really the concept of play something that us as parents we can relate to, that is not difficult, that uh, Hike, we, can, uh, we can really apply uh, with our kids, uh, especially especially with the transformation that we're seeing in our kids today. So they are more re reserved uh, because of uh, everything that they have been through, two years of uh, lockdown, and then uh, the, the kind of, you know, we're seeing more and more kids uh, involved in video games, more in social media, more and more. So how do we take the kid from an uh, 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 you know his own world and and the tech world into another kind of play so this is what we will explore with you tonight uh, I would like to remind the uh, the audience that they can interact with us using the Q&A on the app so please don't hesitate this is an interactive session we want to ask Mira all our questions uh, and also take your suggestions for more sessions in the future so don't hesitate to um, ask us your questions in the Q&A and ask anonymously to keep your uh, privacy. Uh, that, that's all from my end. Uh, Mira, uh, start by introducing yourself and then we're all ears to go through uh, a little bit take the topic of tonight. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Sandra. Again, thank you for doing all this work and putting all this effort in Sira. Um, chapeau. <laughs> It looks like uh, great work is happening. Um, so it's also my honor to be here with you tonight. And as you said, let's see okay, how it goes. Uh, definitely, I also encourage um, the audience to interact, whatever questions they have. Maybe if something wasn't very clear or if they would like to know more about it, I keep the keys to ask. I will introduce myself. I'm uh, Mira Saad, a mental health counselor and art therapist. I have my master's degree in mental health counseling and art therapy from Lesley University in Boston, the US. And since 2011, I moved back to Lebanon. I uh, established Artichoke Studio, which is an art therapy center in Beirut. Through Artichoke Studio, we do a lot of work. A big part of it is um, private sessions, individual and group sessions. And um, we also do collaborations with all kinds of institutions and organizations working uh, with different populations. So I've worked a lot in hospitals, prisons, refugee camps, schools, private settings, etc. And a big part of my work is around the trauma, especially given where we are in the region and my own personal interest and passion. Um, also, I love working with kids because they're so playful. But you know, Sandra, I was actually thinking, and we agreed on the topic a while back. And when I was recently preparing for it, I'm like, did we talk about creative expression and play for adults or for kids? And then I'm like, why did we do it for kids? <laughs> because we could have done it for adults, actually. That's important. Maybe you should be passion for hey. <laughs> And honestly, if we think about it, I mean, kids, they don't need to be encouraged to play. Kids just do it. So one point to start with is that we need to allow them to play. Um, and as you said, unfortunately, these days, the environment doesn't uh, encourage it that much, especially in our culture. Let know they're so busy with social media and uh, TV and screen time and all of that, which is a little bit overwhelming. Um, but uh, eh, it's something to keep in mind. And um, as I said, we just need to allow kids to play. And another part is that we as adults can be very playful. We're not gonna talk about that tonight. Um, maybe we can look, Sandra, at the, the, the five basic topics that we thought we can uh, 
talk about today. So just the, the, the audience will have an idea about what we'll be talking. The first two points, which I will go over quickly, are what is creative expression and free play and why they are so important. I'll give some time uh, to talk about the importance of setting a safe space and what that means. Then the biggest part, I think, is how to encourage our children to express their feelings and what is our role as parents or caregivers in um, guiding the children while they are playing and creating. So I think that the question four and five will take the most time. Um, yeah, and maybe we'll, we'll go back to this outline a little later. Um, so I will see at the beginning, what is creative uh, expression and free play? Uh, creative expression basically is any action almost, basically when we are uh, trying to express ourselves and whatever's inside us is taking a shape outside, whether in words, movement, shape, colors, forms, doesn't matter. And free play is basically unstructured play. Any play that doesn't have any rules or regulations, uh, doesn't, uh, is not guided by an adult. So children can do whatever they want, however they want, choose the toys, the materials they want to play with. That is free play. And the big question is why it's important? Well, because children are constantly growing and they're constantly developing and they're absorbing so much in little time. They're biologically growing and they're absorbing a lot. And all of that is happening in a short period of time. So they need ways to digest all of all of that, uh, to digest and process all of this. And creative expression and free play is a great way to do it. Um, I think we, we can okay, put the slide uh, on the sideline. It's just it's just the outline. The idea is, um, again, really the importance of encouraging them to do that. And it's a way to develop imagination. It's a way to teach them problem solving skills because that's how they start to face certain obstacles and they wanna figure out ways to deal with these obstacles. And when they're just playing, they do it naturally, even in a social setting. So even a free play has to do with interacting with others and how to problem solve certain interactions with others, especially when we let children lead the play. Uh, something also to keep in mind is that children who are encouraged to express themselves and play freely, tend to grow up with less anxiety, less stress, more healthy relationships, um, and uh, better emotional intelligence overall. So that's very important to start with. Um, I did, just think I wanna go back to the point that I started with, and uh, again, uh, being playful as adults is very important. And if we as caregivers are not playful, it's gonna be very hard for us to kind of allow that to the children. Uh, it's an invitation that I may repeat later on. And a big part of being playful sometimes is just really um, being present with the children and allow them to take us to their, to their world. And now I think I will talk a little bit about how can we do that? And to start with, usually we talk about safe space. And what is a safe space? We talk about the safe space from a physical perspective and from an emotional perspective. So because as parents or caregivers, very often we worry about kids, like they not to hurt themselves or hurt each others or fall accidentally. So sometimes having a space where kids can climb and jump, be messy, be loud, do whatever they want is important without us have to, having to worry about all the details. So setting a room or even a corner or a table where kids can be messy plays a big role in setting a safe space. Um, it gets into all the details of, you know, child proofing a room to um, being more creative about some parents, for example, they, they dedicate a room for toys and for play and they allow one wall in that room for the kids to draw on it. And they think it's okay, we'll, we'll just paint it in a few years. Um, things like that, plays a major role for the kids to feel that they have the space to express themselves. Like, no, otherwise, parents will be, no, don't, la, ma, 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 
sometimes even for example for us uh, the the neighbor that lived under us at some point was getting annoyed by my daughter jumping all the time so we had to figure out the way okay we need to get mats we need to make a place that this is where you can jump as much as you want because we're not going to tell her don't jump or don't run um, even kids who have uh, emotional regulation issues or hyperactivity it's important for them to have a corner where whenever they're angry they can go and shoot the ball there or they can go and shout there and or jump or whatever that is um, so it's a letting it all out space and from the emotional perspective a safe space is where a child feel that they can do whatever they want without being judged. Now, we're going to talk a little bit more about that when we talk about um, how to encourage children to express their feelings. But to start with, we have a lot of OK, so we'll start. How can I change my seven year old habits of playing video games with tablet when I tell him to go outside? Maybe ruh. Mm. Well, I think this is common يعني, with the, a lot of the parents today. We're seeing more and more يعني, when we look at our kids you know, at seven, at eight, um, and the way they live and the way they spend their time is so different from how we as parents used to spend our time when we were seven, eight. يعني, there's this shock. And you know, when we look back at our childhood, uh, we didn't come back home. We played outside maybe until 13 when we were 13, 14 years of age. And now we see our kids uh, from the age of six, seven, they're already uh, spending their time play, uh, sitting down and, and playing more, uh, with, with um, technology instead of really this free and creative play. So mm -hmm. what, what would be your advice? Well, ideally is not to get there in the first place. Um, ideally is to have a balanced time a, a, a strict time for screen time and then the rest of the time to we're going to actually talk a little bit about it uh, of the importance of stimulating the child yet at the same time how important it is to let them be bored a little bit so they can come up with games Hello, to, sorry. <clears throat> to jump from a place where the kid is uh, on the screen all the time and tell him go outside and get bored or go outside and invent it's a big jump so usually doing small steps, for example, even starting playing interactive game on the screen, it's like, okay, let's play something you and I with the emojis on the phone. Um, for example, come up with a title of a movie or a title of a song or a title of a game using emojis and I'm gonna try to guess it and then you do it. So that's just to break, you know, okay, we're using screens, but a little bit in a different way. Um, and then maybe they can do something like using the songs or music they like and doing something while they're doing the songs. Another way, like a step further, is going outside with a child and playing with them. Because again, I go back to this important point. Sometimes parents are on the screen all the time. And I see it in the playgrounds. When we go to playgrounds in Beirut, you see parents are on the screen all the time. How are we going to tell the kids not to be on the screen when we are on the screen? So it's important really for us to show them as a first step how to have fun and really seven years old, take them to a playground, take them to a playground, play with them while you're in the playground. So to show them that you can be active and then slowly you can start to encourage them to invent their own games. And this is one of the things that parents can do. Um, one trick that is nice, we used to do a lot or encourage parents to do it during COVID is for example, get a bag, uh, if you have the chance to get like a nice bag and put in it random stuff, uh, it can be from spoons to straws to pieces of papers, pens, um, sometimes recycled materials, and just ask the kid to invent something with it. And every day, remove a few items, add a few items, and then ask the kids, okay, invent something with it. Or sometimes even um, with cards or any game, ask them to invent new games with the game that they have. For example, a puzzle. How many games can you invent with a puzzle? Give them a challenge so they feel that they have something to stimulate or encourage them. Another question, Kamina. 
uh, along the same lines and we're we're starting hella al summer this comes at a really good time this session comes at a really good time when our kids uh, a lot of us uh, okay the, the kids are a lot of us have put their kids in summer camps and a lot of us have their kids at home and sometimes even at home we don't have the space to go outside they can't go outside they're stuck in an apartment the parents are working how can you keep a child busy and encourage creative play if they're home alone all the day uh, all day you know how can you monitor this and what can you do we have two months of this kind of routine so mm. I go back to saying first, give them a space where they can play. Yani, mm -hmm. Even in small houses, it can be a corner. It can be a table. It doesn't have to be like a whole room. It can be just that place. And you're going to have to get at least a couple of materials to start with. Puzzles, coloring books, um, even books, like books that read, but interactive books. There's lots of interactive books about emotions and, and things. And then you may start to, it depends really on what the child is interested in. Ask them to invent things. Children can be so creative. They can play so much if we start to do that. Um, sometimes, for example, girls are, I hate to say girls and boys, but in general, there's a tendency of wanting to play with dolls and Barbies and things like that. So they can do a paper doll and they can design clothes for her. And every day you can build like a wardrobe. The older they get, the longer projects you can start to give them. At be below six, six years old, that, that's usually a little bit difficult, but six to eight, nine years old, even the younger, you can give them really big projects, like almost household course, but fun fun ones um yeah uh, legos i mean that can things that they can build with um things that they can create um yeah so sometimes also i don't want to say making a plan but give them choices give them at least two or three choices for them to do per day and they choose what they want to do every day uh, okay, my ch my child does after school activities three times a week. He doesn't have time to play alone. Is this bad? Can I do something about it in summer? Um, I hate to say it's bad or good, but it's highly advisable actually to give the child free time, really free time and let them do whatever they want. Some kids are not necessarily in after school programs, but they're in activities. Some kids have an activity almost every day, swimming, piano, gymnastic, tennis, I don't know what, it's too much. We're being too demanding from the kids. Just let them play. They have the time to learn all these activities. Maybe choose one, two at most, but more becomes overwhelming. A scout is considered one activity. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when should kids start free play? You mean at what age? Yeah. While they're born. <laughs> I don't want to say at the month zero, but um, I mean, usually free play uh, become takes less of times as they grow. Um, but any age, even at one years old, they start exploring still in their mouths, putting things in their mouths. Again, we go back to the safety. Um, two years old, three years old, they can play all the time. They can be so inventive. We can allow them, again, um, being with them, observing them, and taking part in what they're do, doing, recognizing what they're doing. Very often, I mean, if kids, the point of free play, and hey, okay, I'm, I'm jumping a little bit of, of uh, sessions. We're almost at the end of, uh, of, of the last question. What is our role? The point of free play is not to put the kids somewhere and us not being present at all. Okay, at an older age, that can happen. But at a younger age, it's important for the child to feel that my parents are present. And sometimes when, for example, they jump or they're able to do something or mabari, they color a paper and we give them the reaction, oh my God, this is very interesting, show it to me. Then the kids are encouraged to do more. So the way we respond to what they create and what they do also play a role in encouraging them to do more of that. Um, so yeah, all ages. <laughs> okay. 
uh, my child cries and whines because he's not creative and he gets stuck on one kind of game. What no Shufina Namal in this case? My question is who says he's not creative? Is that the parents or the child? Child. <laughs> the child says he's not creative. Uh, th that's that needs more investigation. <laughs> um, I wonder where that the child got that from. Um, sorry, can you repeat the question? Maybe I can hit a grasp a little bit more. My child cries and whines because he's not creative and gets stuck on one kind of game. If it's not a video game, let them. Mm. Repetition is important in play. And also we're going to talk about it. I think Parfe, maybe if we go if we go over a little bit and then maybe uh, maybe I'll be answering some of the questions and then we can keep it also more open to all kinds of questions. Okay. Um, so yeah, so I was talking about setting a safe space. Um, and we have the physical space and then we have the emotional part where really we don't use judgment. So we don't say, oh, you're not creative. We, we don't correct. Avoid correction, avoid telling the kid how to play. Um, so Hone, uh, there's a lot of things that we tend to do in, in correcting or in setting certain expectations that inhibits the child from doing more. Um, for example, and this is why at the beginning I said creative expression, I didn't say artistic expression because there's a difference. Artistic is totally different than, than being creative. Being creative, again, is just being true to yourself and expressing yourself. It doesn't have to have a certain technique or a certain expectation. Um, so honey, emotional space, I think if we go back to uh, move on to question number four, it also uh, answers a lot of the questions. And how can we encourage children to express their feelings? Because this is very important. And usually we tend um, to, to judge or have certain expectation, starting by naming or labeling the feelings, good feeling, bad feeling, positive feelings, negative feelings. So the first step is try to avoid that. Because when we say negative feeling and positive feelings, we'll have the tendency to wanna get rid of the negative feelings and wanna only have positive feelings, which can leads to toxic positivity and basically it leads to a place where the person feels that there's no place for what we call negative feelings so instead it might be helpful more helpful to use uncomfortable feelings comfortable feelings uncomfortable feelings these feelings makes me feel at ease these feelings make me feel not at ease because there are uncomfortable feelings um, I don't think lots of people would like to be angry for a long time or sad for a long time or frustrated. So these are uncomfortable feelings, but they're not necessarily negative per se. Uh, other things that also we, we encourage avoiding is using expressions that inhibits children from expressing their emotions. For example, don't cry, be strong, mm -hmm. don't be angry. La wala male and no. Let it go, it's okay, there's no need to be angry. We really encourage the caregivers to do the opposite. Allow the kid, show more of an understanding uh, attitude. And I understand that you're angry at this point. If this happened to me, I would be frustrated. I'd be annoyed. I understand that you're feeling this way at this point. Let's see what we can do. Even give them some time to sit with the feeling and then we can process the feeling together. Um, it's also important to keep in mind and know different children have different reactions towards the same situation, even adults. So it's not helpful to compare kids, siblings to each other, or our kids with their cousins or with their neighbors or with their classmates. If my kid gets upset for a certain reason and others don't, I'm not going to tell the child don't be upset because others are not. Recognizing whatever the child is going through helps them express more their feeling. And actually between parentheses, this is how we build the trust with, with children. And this is how we also protect our children against anything that might happen to them from issues that 
they may see on social media to any kind of bullying they may go through. If we build the trust with the kids, we're protecting them for the long run. And one way to build trust is really to allow them to uh, show their feeling. Another way is to encourage uh, that helps children uh, express their emotions is really helping them identify their emotions and naming it. And by doing so, we also need to make sure to avoid assumption. So we're not uh, we're not gonna tell the child, oh, now you're feeling angry. A trick, a tip is starting by describing the, the physical um, symptoms, signs, yeah, signs. signs that the, the kid is showing. And no, the clenched uh, jaw, the grinding teeth, the tight uh, fists, uh, or the frown, or the loud voice. We can tell a kid, you know, Hmm, I'm, I'm hearing a loud voice and I can see that you have your fist clenched. I'm wondering what you're feeling. Mm. Can you tell me? Or how are you feeling now? We give the child the opportunity. At the beginning, we may tell the child, I'm wondering whether you're angry now. This is how we start to help the kid notice their physical symptoms, become aware of it, and learn the terminology of emotions so they can identify it and therefore eventually learn how to deal with it better. Uh, a very important also point to encourage children to express their feeling is to model it, to do that ourselves. And sometimes if I come back from work and I'm tired or something made me angry, I tell sometimes my, uh, my daughter, you know what, I'm tired. I had a very long day. I did lots of things and actually I feel tired today. Or I heard people shouting to each other in, in front of me and that made me feel bad and angry. So whatever we are going through, it's important to express it to the children. Sometimes parents think that they need to protect their children and not tell them when they're feeling sad. Yani, even, even during the explosion, the Beirut explosion, some parents, by the good intention of wanting to protect their kids, didn't tell their kids that they got afraid. Allow the kids saw it on their face. So this is a very good example to show and know actually doing the opposite helps and telling the child, you know what? I got really scared. Now we're safe. So we can go back to the safety that we're living at the present moment, but it's modeling how we express our feelings. Um, yeah. Can, and, we, can we tie uh, that play? Can, can play help the child in expressing their feeling? Oh, yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, they let all their emotions through play, and we, if we give that space without inhibiting it, the children will start to do it more. Mm. So this is it goes back to setting a safe space. And no, Anna, if I allow my kid to recognize their emotions and to express it without inhibiting it, they're gonna do it more often through play, through drawing, through movement, through verbal expression. Some kids start eventually at, at 11 years old to, to write lyrics for songs. Um, yeah. Okay, that's very important. I know we get uh, through Sira and we listen to a lot of parents and we, we get a lot of uh, you know, the concerns of parents today uh, are around kids not expressing their feelings uh, anymore, especially preteen teen you know they struggle with uh i know there's there's uh there's this there is no preparation before oh, oh we didn't work with the child before when young we get to mm. a stage where they're in in their teen age and they or their preteen age and they really don't want to share anything they don't know how uh, they're mm. shy they're inhibited they're not used to being expressive around their parents you know not mm. just uh, not just their experiences, even their uh, and how they are with their parents is reserved. Uh, you know, they're usually reserved kids. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know, hatta, uh, you know, I was talking about the importance of uh, setting this space and uh, the safe space and building trust. This will be a way to prevent getting to the teens years and getting to that difficulty. One very important point is we do stress the idea that all feelings are okay, but not all behaviors are okay. 
So I'm allowed to be angry, but I'm not allowed to hit my sister, for example, or break things in a house. So this is important to be within the safe space. Generally, um, in setting the safe space, we, we say that you can do whatever you want as long as you're not hurting yourself, not hurting others, or not hurting the surrounding. With age, the surrounding can be a little bit more specific, like respecting the time, respecting the space, respecting the materials. But as long as we're not hurting ourselves, others, or anything around us, we're allowed to do whatever we want. Uh, do we take a couple of questions or do we move? Um, hey, let's the... take a couple of questions. We'll, we'll end with the, how can we as parents help the kids? Um, uh, okay, so Anna, um, how can I keep my teen busy? How can I encourage her to play more? Mm. It's important, especially for teens, when they start to build their own identity, it's important to really know what the, the teen is interested in. Sometimes they don't know what they're interested in. If they don't know what they're interested in, it would be nice to do a couple of activities with the teen exploring certain things, like going to a dance class together, going hiking, doing some kind of sports together, playing puzzles together. Again, all these kinds of things might help the teen figuring out a little bit what they like and what they don't like. And we always remind the parents and the teen that whatever the teen might like at this age is not set in stones. This is his identity or her identity, and this is what they're going to like for the rest of their lives. Just that's what they feel like doing now. If they know what the teen like, then build on it, whatever that is. If it's drawing, then let them draw more. If, uh, or encourage them, again, at teen age, doing projects starts to help. If they're into media, then, okay, use drawing and make a movie out of it, using uh, apps and media and and, uh, or maybe you can print a story or, um, so thinking projects wise, cooking, sometimes at teens they start to like cooking. So, okay, maybe they wanna do a pour in the family and do a meal or a dessert twice a week. And that'd be, um, you know, they might be involved in buying the ingredients and, and it's not play per se, but it's time where they are creating something. At teens, we don't talk about free play per se, but more about free time. Mm. It's our role as parents to propose these things. Well, uh, uh, come in, uh, yani, a lot of the parents who are watching us tonight, maybe they, they don't know where to start, how to start. Uh, they, are, they are not creative themselves. So so how, how can we, yani, how can we also push these uh, kind of ideas to our kids? We need to start doing it. Yeah, <laughs> and it's been a couple of years, I'm not working with kids, but one of the main issues uh, as an art therapist working with kids, and I used to tell it to the parents, and no, working with kids as, as a mental health counselor, you cannot go further than how much the parents are ready to go. So the parents need to work on themselves. The more they work on themselves, the more they help their kid to work on themselves. So this is very important. Hala, hey, if, there's, if there isn't this habit, it's not necessarily easy to start. But the good thing, and even on social media, there are um, interesting links. I mean, there's one, I think it's called Busy Toddler or something like that. There's there's a couple of Instagram accounts that are super interesting. They have tons of ideas. I mean, Google it and you'll get tons of ideas uh, about things to do with any age, teenage, whatever it is. Um, but even let's say a teenage person is into screen. Maybe one a place to start with is choosing a movie and watching a movie together, but then taking it a step further. And now after the movie, let's talk about it. What did you like? What did you not like? Uh, what characters, why this character? And, and then maybe you'll, maybe from that, you'll jump into a topic of fashion and you'll realize something related to fashion or science fiction. And maybe the, the, the kid is interested in science fiction or technology or whatever it is. But um, yeah, starting doing the activities with the kids, spend time with them, not being on the screen yourselves, that will be a huge first step. 
I think this is the, the main issue maybe and you know, what's missing is how how many how much time we as parents spend with our kids and play together or mm -hmm. or have these discussions or uh, kind of free time uh, my kids complain that they are bored all the time I tell them to go play but maybe what did they mention the age no uh, we can ask for the age okay <laughs> Hello, honey, it's a little bit tricky. Because sometimes when kids keep on saying, I'm bored, I'm bored, I'm bored, uh, it's a little bit tricky because on one hand, it will help them to give them some ideas. On another hand, it helps them to come up with ideas. So, uh, so honey, when there needs to be a little bit of balance, and no, maybe we agree and no, okay, let's one day sit and think together about five or 10 ideas that you can do. And maybe each day you draw something and we write them down and then you pick a paper and you see what, what are you supposed to do today. And these can include projects or activities, again, depending on their age. Other than that, sometimes if kids really um, keeps on fixating on the parents, it might be that they are seeking attention. So Hone, it's a, it's a little bit of a tricky question. You know, is it seeking attention or is it really being bored? And sometimes being bored is, again, is okay. Other things that they can do, I was always thinking indoors. I think one of the first question was like, and we don't have a space outside, but even indoors, they can plant. One of the things, and you know, pots and some seeds of tomatoes and, you know, Certain things don't really take necessarily lots of space or lots of expenses. Uh, planting flowers, planting basil is usually easy. Tomatoes, uh, taking care of plants. If, if, let's say on a weekend, you went on a hike, gather materials from the hike, wood sticks, uh, stones. If you went to the sea, gather pebbles, uh, shells, draw on them. Uh, you know, even with the pebbles, they can do shapes and, and like uh, flowers, people, whatever, with different kinds of pebbles. So explore and bring materials from different resources that also help, take it, like planning the week. Okay, what are we going to do this week? This week we went to the beach, we gathered some pebbles, so we're going to do a couple of projects with pebbles. Today, this week, and we went hiking, we gathered a few things from uh, nature, and then we can use them this week. Um hike can be a variety. حبيت ال حبيت الأفكار. so the the حدا من ال audience and they answered us five, eight, to eleven years. هيدا يعني you ask the ages of the kids. هلا five they do a lot of pretend play on their own. يعني they can spend hours. If they have neighbors, usually five is easy. Eight becomes a little bit more tricky, and eleven is is trickier. Sometimes, Kamena, when, when you have three kids, it might be one of the ideas and no, um, one day, one kid to choose what they're going to do and the other siblings will join them and then they will take the lead. Uh, this way, maybe can be one person who's, who's leading an activity all day. They, they get to also interact with each other. The 11 and the 5 may not be... Um, hey, can be say, what the, if... Uh, there's a gap in the ages and they 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 don't have the same uh, interest in in play do you do like it, it depends it, de yani it depends on on the relationship between siblings sometimes the 11 years old feel that the five years old are their uh, children and they want to take care of them and they want to you know uh, sometimes also another idea is uh, doing costumes like um, almost like, you know, uh, Halloween or whatever, but not buying costumes, creating costumes. This is another thing. Okay, I know it's off topic, but I know I always wonder, I know when growing up, we never used to buy costumes. We used to create our own. And this is, it can be, you know, even boys, it doesn't have to be into fashion to do that, but creating costumes with, you know, your favorite character. What's your favorite character from a video game? Can you create a costume with whatever you have at home, you can use spoons, you can use pans, you can use uh, clothes, you can use so many different things. A bit, I like the ideas. Uh, you're giving me ideas for my kids. <laughs> <laughs>
اوكي ميس كيك ذس جوينج باك على جوينج باك على الكوستيومز انه ذا ايديا لانه ايف بن توكينج اباوت بروجيكتس سبيشلي فور تينز انه ذا ايديا مي بي Uh, every week, do one day or or two two days might be too much. You know, one day where you create a costume, you take a photo, and and at the at the end of the summer, we're gonna make an album with all the costumes that you choose, and we're gonna give the best costume an award. And so again, giving encouragement to stimulate them and okay, motivation. Uh, so we take this question, then we jump to the last part, and then maybe if there are more questions, we end with that. Uh, my child was sick. most of the time this year with hospital time. She's not a happy child. How can I help her get over this trauma? She is six. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. That's not easy. That's not easy, Abadan. Well, actually one of the topics, Sandra, we were talking about is you know, dealing with children who have chronic illness. Uh, like, no, I've worked in, in uh, pediatric oncology units and I know it's not easy. Um, it's not easy for the parents and it's not easy for the kids. There's a lot of difficult emotions going on. Um, so I go back to stressing about the idea of allowing the kid to uh, express their emotions. I'm just gonna give an example. You know, I used to work in, a, in an oncology, pediatric oncology unit. And very often I used to go to the children and giving them this safe space where they can create whatever they want. And very often children would choose, for example, black colors, or they would, draw a tree and they want to color it all in black. And then the first reaction of the parents, no, why black? Black is sad. And no, خلص, it's okay, let the kid be sad. It's okay, يعني, it's more healthy to allow the child to say I'm sad, to say I'm afraid, I'm worried, I feel guilty, I feel a pressure, I don't know what's going to happen to me. Even the parents sometimes saying, no, you know what? I'm, I'm also sad and disappointed that you also have to, Come to the hospital. It's not easy. I wouldn't want to do that. No one would want to do that. So acknowledging that goes way, yani, way in a, to a better place than trying to say, la, everything is fine. Voila. I'm not saying not have hope. Okay. Yani, we don't want to dismiss something or overlook the importance of having hope, having faith, kill hadan under their own ways. But giving space to express the difficult emotions is important. Oh, and no, yani, again, let's not judge and no, she's not a happy child. No, it's like it feels like a heavy labor to put on the child, especially when they're going through so much. So yimkin akbar and no, at this moment, she's not feeling happy and rightfully so. And no. Okay. هون ما بعرف ميرا ديو ادفايز ذات دي سيك ارت ثيرابي ولا لا يعني ان ويتش كيسز كمان انه كنت عم تقولي انه وي سي انديفيدجوال كيسز اند اولسو جروب باي ان ويتش كيسز دو وي جو تو ان ارت ثيرابيست هلا ان جنرال انا كمان اي ونت تو تو توك اباوت ات ات ذا اند في سيرتن ثينجز وين وي اوبزرف هلا ويل بي توك اباوت ات اند وين وي اوبزرف سيرتن ثينجز ان ان in drawing or in play or like the warning signs to keep in mind. But in general, one of the main things to keep in mind and known as caregivers to check about what the child is going through, what stressors the child are going through and be aware. And sometimes we would be going through a lot of stressors. Yani very often I start working with parents And I ask them, you know, are there any stressors? No, نشكر الله, everything's going fine. Halla. Tab, okay, من حديث to حديث, we got, we get to a point where we know, and know they moved countries, they moved schools, the dad is not being present. Uh, sometimes parents don't have jobs, but they say, oh no, but financially the kids are still fine. It doesn't matter, Yani. It's all stressors. So let us be aware of how much stressors the kid is going through. أول شيء. Okay, and if we know that there are lots of stressors, like maybe a chronic illness or long stays at hospitals, that's a huge stress on the child and on the whole family, which was on the child. So this is a stressor. One, we need to be a little bit more sensitive and keep checking the behaviors of the child and the mood of the child. When we feel that the behaviors and the mood are changing to the point where it's affecting their daily functioning and their health, we need to seek support. 
هلا ان جنرال انا ام توكينج ا ليتل بيت اون ذا اذا بدك يعني هون خلص وي نيد تو تشيك وذ سم ون بس ايديالي وين وي نو ذات وي ار جوينج ثرو ستريسرز ات مايت بي ا جود ايديا تو تشيك وذ ا مينتال هيلث بروفيشنال جست تو سي انه هاو كان اي وات كان اي دو تو ميك ات ايزير اند سموذر اون ماي تشايلد جيفن ذات وي ار جوينج ثرو ستريسرز without the child necessarily going uh, through drastic changes in behaviors and moods. All right, no, no more questions. Is that to handle the last point and then we can... Uh... Okay, okay. The, the last point, um, I'll try to, to uh, talk a little bit. So basically the question is, as parents, what can we do? Uh, what's our role? Um, And this is the point where I wanted to say, and you know, free play does not mean parents not being present. It means allowing them to lead and let them decide what they want to do. But with our presence, our presence is important again, because in big part we are witnessing and we are recognizing what the child is going through. And it's a way to contain the child and for the child to feel safe. Hello. The first thing we can do is encourage stimulation. Uh, to encourage stimulation, a few, few things we can do, like encouraging exploration. And when we offer, for example, a game or a toy or some drawing materials or even musical instrument to a kid, ask them to explore it. Yani, okay, there's a way to use, for example, a guitar, and there's a way to use a drum, there's a way to use the brush, there's a way to uh, whatever, use a certain game. But also, it's really nice for the kid to for them to invent. Yani maybe they want to hold the brush the other way around and use the stick. Let's not stop them and say, لا, let's avoid correction. Okay, and actually the opposite. Yani encourage them to explore different ways. And we, you know, uh, different ways I can use a drum, different ways I can use whatever, whatever toy or material uh, they have. Um, At the same time, come a little bit before and give them, uh, allow them to be a little bit bored. That is okay. That is okay for the child to be a little bit bored. Uh, a mix of exploration and encouragement to invent things with boredom, which would equal more like free time. It would be, uh, it can motivate the kid to. Um, come up with ideas and things. Hello. Other than that, we really ask the parents to observe what's happening. Hey, there's something, um, the observe and the inquire, I'm often, as an art therapist, I'm often asked by parents if I can analyze or interpret a child's drawing. And I always say that we cannot do that. Yani, there are no scientific studies that shows that certain colors and certain shapes have the same meaning in different cultures at different times for different people. And as simple as the color blue for someone may feel hope, for others is um, sadness, for some people is depth. And it can be so many different things for different people. So we cannot interpret a child's drawing per se, but what we do is we observe. And I always say, you know, as an art therapist, I visually listen to the people I work with. And by observing, there's lots of things to observe. Um, we first observe the Um, materials that or the toys that the child picks and how they behave with that so how are they behaving with the with the toys and sometimes for example they choose certain toys and they hit them a lot or they throw them sometimes the other way they arrange them and they want to make sure that they're neat all the time uh, sometimes they do a lot of pretend play similarly with materials uh, uh, the, the point of observing is not to interpret but to inquire later on and to let the kid know that we were here and we witnessed you, we heard you, and we're interested in knowing more about what's going on with you. What's going on in the sense and know in your imagination, in your world, what's happening in your world. Um, and really observe the process. Yani Matalan, let's say I can talk mostly about drawings because given I'm an art therapist and we use visual expression, um, Observe, for example, what is the first thing that the kid put on the paper? And then what did they add? And where did it end? The first thing 
might be the first thing that they saw. And um, okay, and I'm a wife now. Um, I don't know what to draw. And I saw a flower in front of me. I want to uh, draw a flower. The first thing that they draw might be the thing that is the most important to them. Or it might be simply the thing that they know how to do. So mafi, yani, mafi, one thing means one interpretation. It's really more mostly about observing, seeing how the how the drawing develops, and then inquiring about it. We also focus on, um, I said that the behavior uh, as the kid is drawing. So are they using a lot of pressure? Are they drawing all over the place? Are they drawing in um, one place sometimes for example certain kids use a lot of pressure to the point where the paper is ripped and we can simply observe and uh, do a remark and we, i noticed and you're using lots of pressure as if you have a lot of energy that needs to come out can you tell me about it or how do you feel about this what's going on with you yani allow the child to explain more um and then in the case of drawing we also okay, look at the whole content where things are at the paper um, with the colors used, how they are, and then we inquire about them. And the way to inquire is really open-ended questions. What we really, really try to avoid, again, it's um, avoiding assumptions. Yani, as simple as if a kid drew a square and a triangle on top, let's not jump to the conclusion that it's a house. It can be a hospital. It can be a school. It can be a prison. It can be a house. It can be a factory. Who knows? Let's not jump to conclusions. Similarly, for example, if a, if a kid is playing with two toys, let's not assume that the older toy is the, uh, sorry, the bigger toy is the older character. It might be the other way around. So I don't even things that we need to inquire about. And by inquiring, we use open-ended questions. So using things like, oh, wow, I'm, I'm interested in what you've done. Can you tell me a little bit more about it? Or what's happening here? In drawings, we can ask about all these elements. How are they feeling? Where are they going? What are they doing? What are they saying? If they speak, what would they say? Uh, Open-ended questions, yani questions that, which answer is not yes or no, but it, it invites the person or the kid to, to talk much more. Um, yani these are hike. Uh, quickly, I know I said we're running a little bit out of time and to allow time for for uh, questions. <laughs> like if you go shway hike the slides, three three words for each one, just take it to maybe uh, help the audience. Just ah, come in our positive feedback. This is I'm glad I know it's money. And uh, we try to avoid to tell the child beautiful or ugly. We try to avoid comparison. So again, going back to being non-judgmental. Yet we can still give a positive feedback. I, we try to avoid and we what a beautiful drawing, but instead say something like, mm, "I find it very interesting. I find it very expressive. Uh, I I noticed that you put a lot of effort, and I think this is really nice. How do you feel about it?" So instead of "This is beautiful. This is ugly," because then we're like encouraging kids and oh, la, if I want to draw, I need to do something beautiful. If I don't do it beautiful. Um, and something else about observing, I'm, I'm remembering the questions that have been asked. Uh, somebody asked about repetition. At the beginning, I mentioned that kids, especially from three to six years old, they absorb a lot. Really, from one week to the other, the kids change. And all of this needs to be digested in one way or another. Repetition helps the kids assimilate what's happening even in cases of trauma, and that is okay. So let's not stop the repetition. Let's allow the kid to repeat. What we can do while inquiring is ask the child, tell me more about it. Without saying, la, ma tazalu, la, ma tkhaf. You know? Um, so this is uh, something. Hala, things to observe, Kamena going back to the question and, and to be mindful of. Nahna we notice, hala, is that in drawings, if kids are using, um, if things came out that were violent or uh, drawings that depict any harm to others or any self-harm or uh, drawings that depict any sexual connotations or if a kid is using a lot of dark colors all the time or if a kid is all the time not being contained on a page. Yani Damon, he's drawing not just on the page, but it's overflowing. 
or if it's every time they rip the paper, I'm like, I'm not good at this. I mean, we really try to notice these behaviors that might reflect um, either something violent, something harmful, or something harmful towards oneself. I and mean, we try to observe them. The most important thing is how much they're being repeated and whether that is also happening at the same time when we are observing behavioral changes or changes in the mood. So we look at more than one thing. If we observed or if we saw violence or sexual connotations or things like that, definitely inquire, keep an eye. All I'm saying, it's not necessarily, it means that something definitely serious is going on. But we do have a question mark for sure. We try to observe, we try to inquire, we ask, we see how, how often it's happening. And um, again, if it's happening with stressors at home or changes in behaviors. Um, we got two, uh, two comments from the, from the audience on the future sessions. So, Uh, more ideas in the future for teens to keep in mind نحكي اكثر للتين فينا نحكي اكثر عن sick kids so كمان mm-hmm. chronic illness و... وهيدا يمكن مننهي لانه عندنا سؤال اخر شيء uh, the school called me and told me my 14 year old keeps drawing violent and dark pictures i didn't notice anything wrong in her life should i be worried i asked her why she draws such pictures she said She likes this art. She likes to draw. She likes to draw from a young age. So, so مثل ما كنت عم يعني how you were clarifying. You know, sometimes uh, we shouldn't make a. You know, as parents, we tend to to judge and to overanalyze. Uh, we shouldn't uh, maybe do that. I don't know what what is your comment. هلا definitely I know it's good and the school observe that and no matter what they're doing their job and there is a question mark so mom and all I know there's no question mark there is a question mark Hello, what to do with it is really helping the team to talk more about it. and when we say open-ended question Hello, why is an open-ended question but in general we try to avoid the why and uh, why sometimes can be a little bit judgmental why are you doing this <laughs> it can almost stop doing it I know that's probably not the intention, but it might come up, especially for the teenager, the why, and no, it's almost the response would be, why are you asking me why? Uh, so I, يعني, with teens would like parents to know that they're concerned about them to a certain extent. So I would suggest for the, for the parent to approach the teen and say, you know, this is a concern from the school. And we're actually curious to know why uh, what's making you interested in drawing these drawings you know we know that you love drawing since since a long age and we really like that about you and we want to encourage you to do that and this is very important we are curious again to to know what's making you interested in these images can you tell us more about it and then um start to make it more like a, a check-in habit and no hala ma ba'rif the, the habit of the family but in general We encourage the parents to always be checking in with their kids. And again, a simple tip I do with my daughter, who's two years and a half, three years old. And when she comes back from the daycare, how was your day? Was it very good? Was it okay? Or was it bad? And she loves me to do this. This is a very simple, quick check in. With age, you can uh, take a start to inquire with some details even more. With teenage, uh, being interested and in, knowing. You know, to to heke, share her drawings. Sometimes when she's afraid of privacy at teenage, I, know, like, I don't want to share. So you choose what you'd like to share with us. We'd really love to know. I know you have these skills. So every week, heke, choose one drawing and let us know about it. But again, it's important for the parents to express to the teen and know they heard this, they're concerned, and to remind the teen and know if there's anything that is annoying them or stressing them that they're there to listen without the judgment hala sorry to briefly answer the question i know it's a whole it, it really depends on the general approach the parenting approach of the parents with the team uh, but uh, showing concern wanting thank to know so more <laughs> thank you so much uh, mira now we're 
the end of our session tonight. A big, big thank you. It's very insightful. It's the first time we approach such a topic. Uh, maybe in future sessions, uh, we can go deeper into particular topics يعني, out of the, the concerns that were shared tonight. Big, big thank you. على وقتك. <laughs> we'll we'll put the yeah you know, the our audience can replay the session right after. We will put the session also on uh, YouTube. Thank you so much. Uh, any parting words before we uh, close? Play. <laughs> really play. The next session for adults. Hey, they're finished. I'm sure. Thank you. Thank you. We thank you so much, Alexandra, and for all the efforts you're doing. Thank you. Thank you so much. Have a great night. You too. Bye.